Now, how do you, why can't we just take a microscope and look at our crystal that has atoms all lined up in its nice rows and columns and see the atoms itself with our own eyes? Why can't we do that? Well, and the reason is that the wavelength is too big of, of light. Light is 400 to 700 nanometers. That's way bigger than the size of atoms. If you're going to, what the Heisenberg uncertainty relationship tells us is that you're going to probe something on that distance scale, you need to have uh, a probe that has momentum on that uh, bigger scale. All right, and if you work out this constant, you find that this is about 10 to the minus 7th electron volt meters. So that's a, that's a fundamental uh, energy distance scale of nature. So for atoms, if you want to see atoms, which are around 10 to the minus 8th meters, you need something like 10 electron volt photons, the far ultraviolet or greater. We can actually see uh, atoms on the surface of a material with, you've heard of electron microscopes, right? Why do we have electron microscopes? We calculated it here. If you have 100 volt electrons, those have a wavelength of 0.123, we saw 0.123, nanometers, a tenth the size of an atom. So that, then you can start to get uh, resolution on your microscope corresponding to the features that you want to see, the bumps of the atoms on the surface. And there are beautiful pictures taken with electron microscopes uh, doing just that. Suppose you want to see a nucleus. What sort of probe do you need? Well, to see that, to see sizes like that, you need, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, 10 million electron volt photons, which are gamma rays, and uh, you know, not so easy to come by uh, uh, photons with such high energy. So probing nuclei takes much higher energy particles. So you know, you naturally, being curious scientists, you say, what is the smallest thing there is and how much energy does it take to see it? Well, going the other way, let's take the highest energy thing we've ever made on Earth, which is the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, and look for the smallest thing we can. Test the size of quarks themselves. Quarks, remember, are the particles that make up protons and, and, and neutrons. A proton is made of two up quarks and a down quark. And a neutron is one up quark and two down quarks. That was on one of the previous lecture slides. So recently, uh, our group here at UC Davis, which works on the Large Hadron Collider, uh, one of our postdocs, did a test of substructure of quarks down to a the highest uh, level we could. Now the way we do that is to collide protons together. That's what the LHC does, collides them at the highest possible energies that we can attain. Uh, and the energies that we were running in uh, 2012, we had protons at 4 trillion electron volts hitting other protons at 4 trillion, total of 8 trillion electron volts in the center of mass. Now, um, you're not really colliding protons. They're big things with little quarks inside them. What you're actually colliding are the quarks themselves. And the, the, each quark only carries a fraction of the energy available, so really, we were able to test this out to about one trillion electron volts using the fraction of energy carried by the quarks. And this is like repeating the Rutherford experiment that was done back in 1909, again, a hundred years later, but now on a scale which is orders of magnitude smaller because we have orders of magnitude more energy available. We can test to see if there's anything. We, we already found that inside atoms are the nucleus, inside nucleus are protons, inside protons are quarks. Is there anything inside quarks? You know, is it turtles all the way down? You know that one, right? That, uh, the, the old myth that at, the, the earth was carried by Atlas. What does Atlas stand on? He stands on the back of a turtle. What does that turtle stand on? He stands on the back of another turtle. It's turtles all the way down, right? Um, it could be that the way, that's the way the structure of matter is, that inside quarks are smaller things still. And it, the way we would see this is by smashing quarks together, if we see too many bouncing off sideways, just like Rutherford did when he sent the alpha particles into the nucleus, if we see too many coming out sideways, it would indicate that there is small, you know, something smaller inside quarks. Well, the answer is we see nothing. 
I mean, well, we don't see nothing. We see what we expect if quarks are behaving as if they're point-like little particles. And we can thus conclude using this relationship that quarks must be smaller than about 10 to the minus 19th meters. As far as we can tell, they're point-like down to that, that level. Nice to know, though, that you're at a university where people are, are doing research like this. Really, that's really kind of cutting edge stuff in the sense that we're really testing what is the smallest thing in nature using this, this fantastic machine, the Large Hadron Collider. Well, we have made great discoveries at the Large Hadron Collider, including the fact that, uh, you know, in the last five minutes of lectures, I'm going to tell you about the cutting edge of, of science, where we are now in 2015, 100 years later. We have a new ultraviolet catastrophe, nothing less than that. We built this machine, though, 27 kilometers in circumference, underground, 100 meters underground. Uh, the blue things that you see there are magnets. Okay, right-hand rule, the protons are going here, they're being pushed to the left, right? Uh, the protons are positively charged, so our thumb goes in the direction of the, the, uh, the beam going through the tunnel there. Our palm is pushing them to the left. That means the magnetic field produced by these magnets must point in the vertical direction is pointed down. Of course, there are protons coming the other way. For those, the magnetic field is pointed up. There's actually two evacuated tubes inside here um, carrying the beams of protons in opposite directions. They're two and one magnets. These things are operated at 1.9 degrees Kelvin, very close to absolute zero. Uh, that's to make the uh, magnet coils inside them superconducting, lose their resistance to electricity. This is colder than space itself, right? Because you go out into space, it's 3.2, you know, balmy 3.2 degrees Kelvin from the cosmic microwave background radiation out there. And the, this machine will, uh, in fact, maybe later this year, produce 7 trillion electron volt protons. Haven't gotten to full energy yet without destroying the machine. Here's a picture of one of the experiments, the one that I work on. It's called CMS, the Compact Muon Solenoid. It's not so compact. It's 15,000 tons of uh, stuff. And when you get up close and personal to it, you can tell. A lot, this was built in somebody's uh, laboratory by undergraduates, wasn't it? It looks homemade when you, when you get up, up to it. Oftentimes you'll see pictures like this referred to as that's the LHC. No, the LHC it, it produces a beam that goes through this tube here, which runs through the center of the experiment. The protons collide in the center, in the heart here. And we surround that uh, collision region with layer upon layer of different particle uh, detection equipment. And then from time to time, as this picture was taken in May 2013, and uh, you, so you move back this piece of the detector, which ordinarily sticks in, you see this nose sort of sticks into the center region there. It just rides along on a cushion of air, actually, to, to go in and out. We had moved it out, built up this structure, built the platform, and, and then the secondary platform for us to walk inside and get at our detector in the middle, and there's yours truly standing right there. That was my first time on the platform for, uh, for several years. It's an amazing sight to behold. So that's where I've, I've been doing my work. What is the catastrophe, though? Well, I have this beautiful picture, very simple picture of the fundamental constituents of matter. Quarks and leptons are the charged, and well, neutrinos are neutral, but the, these quarks, up and down quarks, make up ordinary matter. There are heavier versions of quarks charm and strange and top and bottom. Top quark was discovered back in 1995. I worked on the experiment that discovered it and completed this nice picture. Uh, electrons have heavier cousins called the muon and the tau particles, uh, which are just like the electron, only this one is like uh, a thousand times heavier than, than the electron. We don't understand why we have three, as we call them, generations of these fundamental particles. But it's a nice, beautiful, simple picture that has emerged in the last 40 to 50 years. Then we have the forces are carried by the photon, carries the electromagnetic force. Uh, radioactive decay is governed by the weak force, the W and Z bosons. And then it's all nuclei are held together 
against the electromagnetic forces trying to push them apart. After all, you have protons, which are positively charged, right next to each other. They, there's an extremely strong electromagnetic force trying to blow the nucleus apart, but the strong force is stronger and, and holds it together. Uh, nice, beautiful, simple picture. Here's the math. <laughs> uh, it's not so pretty, uh, unless you're the one maybe who invented it to begin with, which I'm not. Um, and never mind the missing parenthesis here. There's a couple terms in the equation I want you to see. This thing says there must be something that we call the Higgs boson, the so-called God particle that you maybe read about. Uh, and, that, and this shows how the Higgs boson interacts with those ordinary matter particles that, that we have. So what is the catastrophe? Well, if you try to use this theory to calculate the mass of the Higgs boson, it blows up. Okay, we discovered this thing two, uh, three, two and a half years ago, almost three years ago in 2012, a Higgs boson anyway, of mass 125 GeV, around 130 times the mass of a proton. Is it the Higgs boson? That's what I do. I work on testing the properties of this thing, making sure it behaves the way a Higgs boson should. So what's the catastrophe? If you try to calculate the mass of the Higgs in the theory, the theory blows up. It's just like we had with the ultraviolet catastrophe and black body radiation. That led to a complete revolution in our understanding of nature, quantum mechanics. We, we're there again. We have a, a theoretical problem. Our theory does not work. But the experiment says this thing does exist. We have a lot of different solutions involving new physics. And, uh, you know, wish us luck. Maybe we'll discover it this year.